About three years ago, I made a closed ecosystem. The goal of this ecosystem was to have a large biodiversity. Therefore, I went to a pond during springtime, which I knew had a lot of biodiversity during springtime. There, I collected soil and plants and all of the animals living in and on it. I also added many different homegrown aquarium plants. We had this wild plant from the pond. We had the Pogo stellamon stellatus octopus, the Valisneria, water stalwart or Colitriche palustris, Hygrophila polysperma, a species of water weed in the genus of Elodea, Limnophila siciliflora, also known as Ambulia, Cryptocorina ventii, a very small piece of Menta aquatica, two more wild plants of which I don't know the name, and the Hygrophila corimbosa siamensis, also known as Giant Hygro, which was going to be the centerpiece of the ecosystem. I also added three species of floating plants, duckweed, water sprangles and water lettuce. Because I still wasn't satisfied, I went out again to collect even more animals and plants. I found freshwater macroalgae in a different species of Elodea. Since there was still one species missing that I really wanted in there, I went out of my way to collect it separately, those organisms being tubifex worms. So, these were all the plants inside the biodiverse ecosphere. What about the animals? Well, settle in. We have this large back swimmer, Notornecta glauca, a smaller back swimmer, exact species unknown, juveniles of the back swimmer, Corexa punctata or Cigara striata, we had Daphnia, aquatic mites, copper pods, Mosquito larvae, ostracods, bladder snails, aka Fisa fontinalis, Planorbis planorbis, a young snail, either Limnea stagnalis or Radix ovata, there was Potamopyrgus antipodarum, Planorbis corneus. Phantomage larvae, a mystery crustacean, this very cute aquatic beetle, Hygrotus inequalis, aquatic isopods, and of course, tubifex. So, that's how this ecosystem started out. After a month, this is how the plants were doing. The Elodea, or at least one of them, spread around the entire jar. The Velisneria was growing really tall and started to clone itself. The Cryptocorina was doing great, so were the Hygrophila polysperma and Pogostemon salatus octopus. The Ambulia was also cloning itself, and the centerpiece, Giant Hygro, was hard to see, but growing. The floating plants were difficult to see, but also doing well. A few new insect inhabitants appeared, like this small larva, and this large larva, or should I say huge larva. It was almost 3 cm long, in inches that is a different number. And that's quite large for an animal living in a relatively small closed ecosystem. It was preying on a lot of the other inhabitants, like on this Hygrotus inequalis, although this one got away. And it turned out there were tiny springtails in here too. When the ecosystem was three months old, I decided to take the dragonfly larva out of the jar, because I was afraid it would eat everything else. As it turned out, it was probably an Aeshna cyanea. After three months, adult flatworms like this Dugesia lugubris started to show up from the eggs that were added in the beginning. 
That is the last you saw of this ecosystem, almost two and a half years ago. I hear you wondering, what is it like now? Well, I could tell you, and I guess I will. This is what it looks like nowadays. It's still very green. So, how are all the plants? Well, not great. The Velisneria is still growing strong and has spread throughout the entire jar. It has proven time and time again to be a really resilient plant in closed ecosystems. Here on the foreground you can hopefully see a very healthy and green Elodea stalk growing, one of the infamous water weeds. The mass of plants you see in the background is a mixture of the other waterweed species and what I think is a weird growth form of the Ambulia, or more likely a weird growth form of the water starwort. It's a bit hard to tell, but you'll see more of it in the rest of the video. Here's a bit of a close-up. It forms fast-growing and dense mats of plants that even grow out of the water. Except for these four benthic plant species, all other species went extinct. So in the plant department, this ecosystem has seen a serious loss of biodiversity. In the last update you already saw that the water sprinkles and water lettuce disappeared, leaving duckweed the only floating plant left. After all this time, the duckweed is still here, but it doesn't look like it is in great shape. Alright, so those are the plants, but what about the animals? Well, here, right in front of your own 0, 1, 2 or 3 eyeballs, you see the star of the show, the star of this ecosystem and the star of many other ecospheres, as it's the only animal that's never gone extinct in any of my projects. These are ostracods. There are a staggering amount of them in this ecosphere. Unfortunately, the video doesn't show well just how many there are, but trust me when I say that there's a lot of them. It's interesting to see how it's always these little seed shrimp that somehow become one of the last animal species left in the closed ecosystems I make. And they're usually quite abundant too. What's especially interesting about this is that at the start of the life of the ecospheres, they're usually not abundant at all. Sometimes there's a few of them, sometimes I don't even see them at all. So somewhere along the course of the life of these ecosystems, the small ostracods become the dominant species. This could be because all other species went extinct, for some reason that doesn't affect these small crustaceans, meaning they're the only ones left. Or they are outcompeting the other animals. Maybe they are more efficient feeders, which wouldn't be a problem in a larger ecosystem like a pond, lake or river. Maybe they are killing juveniles of other species, or maybe they reproduce way faster than other species, which really starts to have an effect when all large predators are gone. Or maybe it's something else entirely, I honestly don't know. But these little ostracods are not just one of the species living in this ecosystem, they are the only animal species left or at least the only animals that can be seen with the naked eye. What's interesting is that in some other closed ecosystems I made, that had a lower biodiversity from the start, and are in some cases also smaller, like the first ecosphere I made, the natural ecosphere, the animal biodiversity is actually still higher. This ecosphere has the ostracods, but also still houses bladder snails, which were also present in the biodiverse ecosphere. In fact, there was a whole range of snails present. And the spring ecosphere, which initially also had a lower biodiversity and is two years older, still houses the same small ostracod, but also snails and a larger species of ostracod, which is buried in the sediment and might be a bit tricky to see. Isn't that neat? So interestingly, in the project where a high biodiversity was the goal, after three years, only four plant species, five including the duckweed, and only one animal species are left. So it's actually not that biodiverse at all anymore. The trend I'm seeing in all of my ecosystems is that over time the biodiversity diminishes. 
It appears from my projects that the initial level of biodiversity and amount of species does not have an effect on the amount of species found after a few years. Of course, this is a very small sample size, so no real conclusion can be drawn, but it's still a cool trend. After three years, the initially very biodiverse ecosystem is not biodiverse at all anymore. I should add that it was open two and a half years ago to release the dragonfly, but that shouldn't have affected the biodiversity at all. Except for, of course, the removal of one single species. Even though this ecosystem is now not that biodiverse anymore, it is still a fully self-sustaining ecosystem in an airtight jar, where plants, animals, bacteria, algae, microbes and probably fungi too are living together, living from each other, living for each other and forming a sustained cycle. That, the fact that it is a self-sustaining closed ecosystem even after three years is just really cool to me. After three years there are still animals living here, which are the great great who knows how many greats grandchildren of their ancestors who initially lived here. The same is true for the plants, which have been reproducing asexually. It's fun to experiment with different ecosystems, which is why I have so many. At the end of the day, it never ceases to blow my mind that this is actually working. Plants and animals living in an airtight closed ecosystem, essentially a completely separate ecosystem from the one you and I live in, with no biological interactions with the outside world. Four years! It's just crazy to think about. That's it for the update on the now not so biodiverse ecosphere. Thanks for watching and good shine.